Hi everyone, I am Abdullah Al Mamun. Welcome back to my channel. Today we will learn how to use JavaScript in Oracle Apex to make your pages more interactive. First, what is JavaScript in Apex? It runs in your browser to manipulate the DOM, validate forms, handle dynamic rows, make Ajax calls, and more, giving your app real interactivity. Where to put your code? You have three main places to add JavaScript in Apex. Page level, quick one-off scripts on a single page. Application level, reusable across your entire app. Static files for larger libraries or utility scripts. Let's add a quick script at the page level. In page designer, go to JavaScript execute when page loads, simply shows a browser pop-up with the message. Hello Apex. Refresh the page and you'll see our alert pop-up, proof that the code ran on page load. Next, application level. First, I'll open a code editor, such as Notepad or Visual Studio, where I can write my JavaScript. Here, I'll write some simple JavaScript. Prints the message debug here to the browser's console. It's a quick way to verify that your script is running, and later you can replace the string with variable names or more detailed messages to inspect values and flow. Now, I'll save it. Here, I'll add the .js extension to the file name. In Apex, go to Shared Components. Then Static Application File. Create File. Drag and Drop File. Create. Here, I'll copy the reference code. Now go to the user interface attributes. Click on the JavaScript and past here. Click on the apply change. Then, I'll go to the page. Then, I'll go to the pages console. Here, we can see the debug here message. I'll make some modifications to the file that I uploaded. Next, let's inspect a variable. I've created a JavaScript object called user with three properties, ID, name, and role. Now I'll log it to the console with a label. The first part, user object, is just a string label so you know which log entry is which, and the second argument prints the full object so you can expand it and inspect each property. This is super useful when you need to check the shape or values of an object at runtime. You'll see in the console. User object your custom label. The object literal with its properties. Right pointing black triangle icon, click to expand and inspect each field. This gives you a clear label plus an interactive view of the user object in one log. Use console.dir when you want a more structured, 
easy to browse view of an object's properties than console.log provides. Each entry is clickable to reveal nested details if there were any. Next you'll show how to print an array as a table, so start with. What happens in the console? You get a table with three columns. Index 0, 1. Item 10, keyboard. Quantity 10, 5. Each row corresponds to one object from the array. This format makes it super easy to scan multiple entries at once, compare values, and spot mistakes much clearer than a series of console.log lines. You'll see a table like this in the console. Index item quantity. Now for our final example, I am going to show you how to measure execution time. Load time is the label you gave to the timer. We saw how JavaScript works at the application level. If I now go to another page and check the console, I'll see the same output. Now we'll see how to use a static file on an individual page. First, I'll copy the reference. Then I'll remove the JavaScript I added under the user interface and save. Now if I check the console, I won't see any data. Now we'll go to the edit of the current page. I see a section on the page called JavaScript file URLs. Here I'll paste the reference to my JavaScript file. Now I'll check the console again. I can see the data again. But if I go to another page, no data appears. And again, when I go to page number 16, the data is visible. And that's a wrap on our quick dive into JavaScript in Oracle Apex. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe for more Apex tips and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Got questions or your own JS tricks? Drop them in the comments below. See you in the next one. Happy coding!